At over 13,000 feet, Wheeler Peak is the highest point in Great Basin National Park. It's also the highest point in Nevada that you can hike to on an official hiking trail. This hike is pretty straightforward, but it can be tricky because it is so high. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to do the hike safely. The hike's in Great Basin National Park, which is pretty far away from most civilization. It's about three and a half hours west of Salt Lake City, about five hours north of Las Vegas. Now, when you first get to the park, you're going to want to stop at the visitor center. This is the last place you'll be able to fill up with water before you get to the trail. And you can also get a map here. Now, to get to the trailhead, we're going to take the Wheeler Peak Scenic Drive, which is a beautiful drive, climbs a few thousand feet, uh, does a lot of the work for us, gets us up to the summit trailhead. Now, there's a sign for the trailhead, and there's also a small parking area. I'm here at sunrise, and it's pretty empty, but it will fill up during the day. If it does fill up, you can continue on to the Wheeler Peak Campground Park there and join the hike a little farther up. Overall, we're looking at just under 9 miles and just under 3,000 feet of climbing. From the summit trailhead, it's actually pretty mellow, and we kind of gently, you can see it's almost flat here, we gently climb up. But the real climbing doesn't start until we just leave the tree line right here. And then it's pretty much steep. Uh, I'd say most of the climbing is done in the last mile and a half to two miles here up to the summit area. And then when we're at the summit, the actual summit's right here where we first gain the summit. And then there's a nice viewpoint and a series of viewpoints all the way out to the end. And the viewpoints from up here are incredible. And you can even see down into Nevada's only uh, glacier, which is right underneath Wheeler Peak. The trail is easy to spot from the parking lot. There's also a trail board here that gives you some handy distances and everything. You're going to want to check the weather before you get here. In the summertime, there can be thunderstorms. In the winter, this is all snowed in and not really hikeable as a normal hike without snow experience. And we're just going to go ahead and start up on the trail. This hike starts at about 10,000 feet, and it can be a struggle to get enough oxygen. You can feel winded from the start. Luckily, the beginning is pretty flat. There is a little stream in the beginning and there's still a lake along the trail, but in general, you're going to want to bring between two and three liters of water, all of your backcountry essentials, some extra layers for above the tree line. And I like to do this in trail runners, uh, which are more comfortable on my feet. One of the nice things about this beginning part is you get a postcard perfect view of Wheeler Peak on the right, named after the Wheeler Expedition, which mapped a lot of the west. In the middle is Peak 12631, that pointy one. On the left is Doso Doyabi, which is the Shoshone word for White Mountain. That peak on the left used to be called Jeff Davis Peak after the Confederate leader, but it was changed in 2019, I think, to the Shoshone word. After about 1.2 miles, we're going to bear right onto the Alpine Lakes Loop Trail. And we're just on this trail for a little bit. Just really a few minutes, and after a few minutes, look to the right. There's going to be a turn that kind of goes back. That's the Summit Trail. This is what we want to continue on. Make the right on the Summit Trail here and start heading uphill. If you see any wildlife, give it lots of space. I was lucky to see some turkey, some chipmunks, some deer. No bears in the park, but uh, I got pretty lucky this morning in terms of seeing stuff. And as we continue on the summit trail, it gets a little bit steeper as we go through this beautiful alpine meadow here. You're going to get some incredible views up to the peaks, and you can kind of see how we get to climb once we go above the tree line over here. And once we're out of the meadow, it gets a little bit steeper after that as we go up into the trees. When we continue up, if you look down to your left, you're going to see Stella Lake down there. That's Stella Lake. You could do that on the Alpine Lakes Loop Trail, which I also have on my site. You might have noticed I'm not trying to sell you weird stuff in this video. That's because it's entirely user supported. So if you're finding this video helpful, please consider supporting this channel, this guide and supporting free hiking guides like this for everyone. I appreciate it and could not do it without your help. So thank you for all those who support me already. Uh, I couldn't do it without you. And as you climb, we're going to look for that saddle up ahead. You can kind of see where the tree line ends and it gets a little bit steeper before that for our last section in the trees. Then around three miles in, we're going to leave the tree line. And from here on out, it will not only be totally exposed, but it'll be steeper and steeper. And while the last section is steep, there are these switchbacks going back and forth. And as you go up, if there's people in front of you or behind you, you might be able to see them up in the distance. Again, this is totally exposed. The air is going to be thinner here. So just take your time and pace yourself. And, you know, no rush at this point. I did meet a lot of people who were just saying, you know, I'm going to walk for a minute and rest for a minute, walk for a minute and rest for a minute. 
Nice thing about this section, because there are no trees, the views are good, and you can see off to the west as well, which opens up now that we're on this ridge. It's also worth mentioning the signs of altitude sickness, since this is pretty far up. If you're feeling dizzy, if you feel nauseous or have a severe headache, you're gonna wanna stop and acclimatize for a while, just relax, have some water until the symptoms subside. If it doesn't go away or it gets worse, you're gonna wanna descend until you feel better. Unfortunately, that's just part of the deal with altitude sickness. There's not a lot of things you can do. Some people take an ibuprofen. There's also prescription medicine, but uh, you need to take it seriously because you can really get in trouble if you push through it. In the middle of the climb, there's a little bit of a breather where it flattens out a little bit and uh, you know it's, it's relative, but you could see it's not as steep as it was but you'll be able to see the last section. The trail just goes up the spine right there. And uh, as long as you follow that up, you'll be going in the right direction. And if it wasn't obvious, the trail is on all of this rock right here. The rock and the trail is easy to find, but you should pay attention. If you just kind of drift off mentally, you might be able to lose the trail, but overall the trail is well-defined. You'll see some of these shelters along the way. If you get caught up here, you can duck out out of the wind there. This is a no camping zone though. You can't uh, camp here whether permitted or not, but obviously if you get stuck, you get stuck. And the view is down into the area where we came up from. That's down towards the uh, east where we started the hike down the summit trail. And as you get towards the summit, it gets steeper. Well, you might not have thought it was possible, but it is. It's gonna get steeper as we climb up here. And then towards the very end, it kind of goes off to the left a little bit. It eases up just a little bit and then eases up some more. And then you are on the little plateau here where the summit is. And right away, you're gonna get some great views to the south into Great Basin and off to the west. But this whole area is something you can explore up here at the summit. There are a lot of these stone shelters and actually some of them date back to 1881 when a survey was here and they stayed up on the summit for a while. So I'm not sure which one, but really cool. Lots of places to explore up here. You can go all the way to the end where you get some nice views and you can look down to the lakes. You can see Stella Lake, Teresa Lake, and then you can also look over to the other peaks. And the actual summit is not at the end of the ridge. It's sort of the beginning of the ridge in a shelter. You'll find a uh, USGS survey marker and sometimes there'll be a trail register here. No guarantees on that, but it was when I was here. And I recommend having a snack, refueling, regrouping before you head back down. Watch your footing on the path, you know, because these rocks, it's easy just to roll an ankle on it. And obviously keep your eye on the sky, make sure no thunderstorms pop up. And if you do see a thunderstorm, you're going to want to boogie back downhill as quickly as possible. Any questions about the hike, just leave me a comment under the video. I'll do my best to answer it. And if you do the hike yourself and want to leave some tips for others, leave them under the video as well. If you want to bring this guide with you, just search for Hiking Guy Wheeler Peak. I have it on my website where you can print it out or save it to your phone so you have these turn-by-turn -turn directions as you go. Whatever you do, guys, uh, be cautious, be respectful. This is a pretty big peak and there are some risks involved. If you do it right and you stay safe and you stay conservative, you can have a lot of fun here, but just know your limits and know when to turn around no hike is worth losing your life for or getting into serious trouble so have fun be responsible and i will see you out on the trails